Welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Pennsylvania Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. We have an awesome lineup of institutions for you to hear from this evening in a really fun format. Um, it's called a six by six, which means every institution only has six short minutes to share great information with you about their institution. So we hope it's just enough that you'll wanna do some more research on your own. Um, first of all, we know that you're going to have some questions, so feel free to put those in the Q&A at any time point. Um, please type out your question and then also note the college or university you're directing your question to so that they can answer appropriately. Secondly, this is a webinar, so your camera and your microphone are off, so our panelists cannot see you or hear you this evening. Um, third, sign up for more sessions. This is a really fun way um, to learn about multiple schools that maybe you've heard from, maybe you haven't heard, heard of before, and learn more about them. So there's two more hours after tonight, and then there's also more sessions um, happening tomorrow. Um, lastly, this is being recorded this evening, and all of the sessions tonight will be available within one week at strivescan.com slash Pennsylvania. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to our panelists. First up, you have the opportunity to hear from LIM College. Take it away whenever you're ready. Thank you, Courtney. I am just gonna share my screen. Okay. Um, so thank you everyone for being here. My name is Brittany LaRusso and I am a transfer admissions counselor at LLAM College. A little bit about the college um, as an overview, we're a small private um, business college located in Midtown Manhattan, New York. We have about 1400 undergraduate students with a student to faculty ratio of about nine to one. Our average class size is about 17. So if you're looking for um, that small like intimate class feel, that would be definitely what we offer at LIM. We don't really have any lecture halls. Um, so definitely getting to know your professor on that one-to-one -one basis. We currently offer a associate's degree, bachelor's degree and master's degree programs. I'm just gonna chat about the bachelor's degrees as that's typically what most students are interested in pursuing when they apply to the college. We offer six majors. Um, fashion merchandising is our most popular. Visual studies is for our students that are looking to be creative, um, but also staying on like the business side of the industry. Marketing, management, and international business are your typical business courses, um, as well as degrees that you would find. And then fashion media is one of our newer majors from what we saw within the industry and what they needed. So if you're interested in like blogging, blogging, um, journalism, things like that, fashion media is a great degree to explore. And the last major um, is business of fashion. This is only for transfer students. If you're coming in with your associate's degree and or 60 credits, it's a great program to go into. It typically will keep you on a track to graduate within two years. So if you have questions about that, feel free to let me know. And then for the different programs that we offer for online, we have fashion merchandising, marketing, and business of fashion. Okay, LIM College um, really puts a heavy emphasis on internships. So we don't just recommend internships to be completed, but we require them. So LIM students um, graduating with a bachelor's would be completing three internships. The first one is typically a retail experience. The second one is corporate. And then your third internship is gonna be your senior co-op. These are all required, as I said, as part of your major, they're built into your curriculum and we provide you with the resources that you will need to obtain these internships within the industry. A little bit about cost, because um, I'm sure all of this sounds great, but it does come with a price tag. So our tuition um, at LAM for the academic year of 21-2022 is going to be $29,454. And different ways that students are able to help finance their education is first by completing that FAFSA application. Um, the FAFSA application is free, so why not do it? Our school code is listed there and you wanna include that on your FAFSA application so that we can receive your information and provide you with a financial aid award letter. 
a little bit about scholarships that we offer. Um, as part of submitting an application, you are considered for merit-based scholarship. As you can see here, there are two scholarships that you would be considered for first. If you're coming in with at least 15 credits, you would be considered for an academic achievement scholarship ranging between one and $6,000. And then if you're a transfer student who is going to be transferring in with your associate's degree by your first semester at LAM, you would be considered for our transfer grant scholarship, which ranges between two and $7,000. In addition to both of those scholarships, um, you can use a stackable scholarship of PTK. So if at your local community college, you're a PTK member, you will be considered for an additional $1,000 in scholarship. A little bit about our application process. We are not on the common application. Uh, you would visit the lamcollege.edu website to complete that application online. As part of that application, you would be submitting a short answer essay. Um, there's four prompt questions and you would choose three. We also require your high school and college transcripts to be sent officially to the college. If you previously attended more than one college, we do need all of your transcripts. And also um, letter of recommendation, resume, and SAT, ACT optional. A little bit just specifically about our transfer services. Um, we're a very transfer friendly college. A lot of students wanna know how their credits are gonna come over to LAM. So our advising department will provide each student with a transfer credit evaluation that is tailored specifically to your transcripts um, and the credits that you've previously taken and how they're gonna come into LAM. This is just a example of a student's um, transfer credit evaluation. And if you send us your transcript, you would receive one of these via email from our advising department. This next um, you know, screen is gonna show our advising check sheet. So if you're interested in majoring in fashion merchandising, this is an example of showing you how your credits from your previous college are gonna transfer over and then what courses you'll still have outstanding to complete your degree. Again, it's a good check sheet to use, um, helps students to understand how long it will take them to graduate. And the last thing, just to review some of our specific transfer um, supports that we offer. We're super transfer friendly, like I said, you can transfer in a max of 85 credits and we will support you through academic advising um, until you graduate. Thank you. Thanks so much, Brittany, to you and LIM College. Um, audience, feel free to add those questions in the Q&A at any point. Next up, you have the pleasure to hear from the Pennsylvania College of Health Sciences. Take it away whenever you're ready. Good evening. My name is Lynn Longenecker. I'm the senior counselor at Pennsylvania College of Health Sciences. And just a few things about us. We do specialize in health sciences. Uh, so we, uh, that's, that's our primary focus. I'm going to skip through some of these slides, but we have uh, been educating for over 100 years now, so we have a lot of experience. And once again, our emphasis is in the healthcare environment. Uh, we are located in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, so uh, we're about four or five miles from downtown Lancaster. So we are a short drive from Philadelphia, Baltimore, D.C., not too far away from uh, New York City. Uh, we are primarily a commuter college. We do not have any college owned or managed housing. So that is something to take in, into consideration. Um, a little bit about our students here. We have more than 1800 students. Um, we have about a 17 to one faculty to, or student to faculty ratio in the clinical environment, which you get a significant amount of, uh, of clinical experience with all of our programs. We do reduce that uh, the nursing students have about an eight student to one faculty ratio. In a lot of cases for some of the health sciences, you're going to be one-on-one -on -one with, uh, with a preceptor. Uh, just a little bit about, the, uh, about our results. We have very good passage rates for those who complete our programs. Uh, the, uh, pretty much everything that you're gonna be doing with us is gonna require that you complete a uh, competency exam at the end to make sure that 
you are qualified to be uh, to be taking care of patients. So uh, you can see the results there of that. Uh, we do have accrediting bodies so oversee us because once again, it is very important to make sure that uh, that what your the credits you're taking do have value as well as making sure that we satisfy the requirements of the licensure exams. So um, we are a, a premier healthcare institution. When, when we do accept you to the college, we are also accepting you to a program. There are not really any, uh, any undeclared students here at PA College. That's very nice for you when you are, uh, when, you're, when you're applying, even if your program doesn't necessarily begin uh, right away with the clinical component, we are once again reserving a space for you at that time that you are going to be uh, stepping into that. And we are affiliated with Lancaster General, Lancaster General Health, Penn Medicine uh, from, from Philadelphia. So we, most of our programs do begin with a two-year uh, clinical component. Uh, we also offer bachelor's, master's, um, and we have doctoral, doctor of nursing practice as well. We are looking for about a 3.0 for entry. Uh, that's the preferred. Some of the programs are going to require something a little stronger. We do require at least uh, Algebra 2, Science with a Lab, um, SATs. We are being a little flexible on that right now uh, due to COVID, so just be aware of that. Uh, there are going to be physical requirements. You're going to be moving patients, um, so th th that kind of thing is going to be also critical for you. Um, Click uh, or you apply by going to our website, clicking on the apply button. Uh, you may use a, uh, use a code. I should tell you that that code has been updated. It is now, and I apologize for the uh, misinformation there, it is HERO21. Uh, that is the new updated code. Um, you would send your transcripts to us. We do not require an essay or recommendations. Uh, we are looking at your transcripts. So keep that in mind. We do operate on a rolling admission basis. Most of our programs do begin in the fall. A couple of them begin in the spring with the clinical component. So if you're transferring in, that may be something to consider. The programs that we offer, I'm not gonna go through all of those. Uh, you can see what we do have though. All of them, once again, healthcare related. The ones that you see down in the bottom right-hand corner, those are completer programs for individuals who already have um, successfully completed something in nursing or one of the other health sciences. We also have kind of designated uh, along the side what you might need to expect. For example, the nursing and respiratory care, that's more bedside care. The camera to the left kind of indicates the imaging specialties. The, uh, on the right-hand side, you're gonna be looking more at uh, working with your colleagues you're gonna be working directly with uh, the surgeons and that type of thing in those, uh, in those different environments. Uh, we do dual enrollment also, but uh, we'll skip past that. We do offer the traditional financial aid. Um, we do have some scholarships that are based on the FAFSA, so you would wanna complete that. Most of our programs are going to run about 25,000 per year. We do charge primarily by the credit. So um, it is a little hard to give you a hard and fast number, but once again, um, that is at least a good ballpark of that. Uh, we would welcome you to reach out to us at any point if you have any questions for us. And I really thank you so much for your time and your attention. Lynn, thank you very much to Pennsylvania College of Health Sciences. Next up, I have the pleasure of introducing to you Lycoming College. Justin, take it away whenever you're ready. Thank you, Courtney. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Justin Austin. I am the Assistant Director of Admissions at Lycoming College. My colleague and director, Jessica, is with us today, and both of us together work with our transfer students. So just to give a little bit of background about Lycoming College, we're located in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, in central PA, home to the Little League World Series. So it gets very active on our campus, or active in the Williamsport area during uh, the end of August, a really great opportunity to see Little League baseball players from all across the country as well as the world. We are a small liberal arts institution of about 1,200 students with a student faculty ratio of around 12 to 1. 
and class sizes, you're looking at around 15 to 14 kids per class. We have some really great opportunities for our transfer students. So um, with that, when transfer students apply, they can apply via the Common App or the Coalition application. Both are free to apply to online. We ask for an official copy of your college transcript so we can do a credit evaluation. Um, if you have an unofficial one, that's great too. That can begin that process. But again, it would be an unofficial review. So we need that. We need an S, uh, a personal statement. And that's about a three to five paragraph explanation of your college or your educational journey and why Lycoming would be the place for you, as well as your TSAR, the transfer student application report, all that can be found on our website. Um, with that, we have 43 majors and over 66 minors, so students have a great opportunity to customize a cross-disciplinary program to your specific interest and career goals. Some of our unique majors include astrophysics, 3D animation, entrepreneurship, neurosciences, biochemistry, Latin American archaeology. So some really cool things with that as well. When students apply, even with our transfer students, they are eligible for our transfer scholarships, and those are based upon merit. We ask that you have at least completed 24 credits um, for that. If you do not if you have not completed 24 credits before you transfer, that's completely fine. We would just ask then for your final high school transcript, as well as any standardized test scores, SAT or ACT. Um, and that was in consideration for your merit-based scholarships. One of the great things about Lycoming is we are very driven on working with students in a career career fields. And uh, we have our Center for Enhanced Academic Experiences. That office was created under the leadership of our current president, President Kent Trochte. And it's allowing students to take what they've learned in the classroom and put it in a real world experience, whether that's an internship, some sort of faculty student research, um, some sort of study abroad opportunity. And it's all, and each major is placed within a specific cluster. And within that cluster is a career advisor to help you through that process. So those folks will be able to point you in the directions to specific internships, cover letter workshops, mock interviews, all that sort of good stuff. They also take our students to, to to job fairs across the state of Pennsylvania. Some other great things too is that um, at the end of the year when students in certain science majors such as uh, biology, chemistry, any sort of faculty student that research, they do poster presentations and that office is happy to display those as well as any of the internships that take place. Um, for us, we were very fortunate. We understand that the pandemic has been very stressful for everyone, but this past fall, as well as the spring, we were a residential campus. So students were living on campus, going to class. It was a really great opportunity for us to see our students. We were very happy to see them. And for students like yourself that are interested in possibly transferring, to come take a look at what we have to offer. We were doing tours all year. Over the summer of 2020, we retrofitted all of our classrooms with cameras and microphones. We were prepared just in case students were to get sick and they couldn't attend class, they were still eligible to see it via virtually. And we hope to see that in the near future as well. We're very excited with that as well. Besides classes, uh, we have over 80 plus clubs and organizations, which is really great, as well as, uh, we are part of Division Three. We compete in the Middle Atlantic Conference and uh, some other really cool opportunities. We have our outdoor leadership and education program. As you can see in the upper left hand corner is our Craft Gateway Center with our 30 foot rock climbing wall. So for those of you willing to take a risk and, and challenge yourselves, the, uh, the rock wall is there for you to partake in. So we do hope that you could come and visit. So please use the QR code on your screen here to create your own view book. If you do have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to myself or Miss Jessica Quintana Hess, our director, as we both work with transfer students. Our contact information is online and she is probably adding that information right now in the chat box. So please take a look at that. Uh, we hope that you could come visit campus. We will be open during the summer with our appointments at 1030 in the morning and one o'clock in the afternoon. So thank you so much. We understand that being a transfer student is difficult, but we are here to help you through the whole process. And I, I now pass it over uh, to my fellow colleagues. Justin, thanks so much to you and Lycoming College. Next up, you'll have the opportunity to hear from more College of Art and Design. Kim, take it away whenever you're ready. All right, thank you, Courtney. I'm just gonna share my screen. Okay. 
Okay, so um, thanks for being here tonight. My name is Kim Brickley. I am, my title is Senior Admissions Counselor, um, but my primary job here is to help transfer students through the process. I'll be dropping this information into the chat after, so don't worry. Um, we are the first and only all women's art and design school in the country and maybe possibly the world. Um, we've been around since 1848 and we were started by a woman who wanted to give other women the opportunity to become educated and support themselves. Uh, that being said, we also accept applications from those who are non-binary and those who um, identify as women at the time of application. Uh, this comes from our strong history of serving the historically underrepresented within the arts. So we're right in Center City, Philadelphia, which is an awesome location to be. Um, that's City Hall right there, but we're a little bit, I guess, north west of City Hall by all of the art museums. So we have the Barnes Foundation across Caddy Corner. We're next to the Franklin Institute and the Natural History Museum um, and across from the Free Library. So it's a really wonderful place to be a creative person in terms of inspiration right outside of your door. Um, and Philadelphia is just a great place to be a creative person anyway. <laughs> um, so that being said, even though we are located in a very um, large city, we are a pretty small school. We're about 400 to 450 students total, which gives a nice um, eight to one student to faculty ratio. These are the nine majors that we offer. So um, it's quite a range of things that we offer in the art and design visual spectrum. Uh, film is a new major that we're offering this year, which is super exciting. We're in uh, the midst of building facilities and hiring faculty for that program. Um, and a lot of our students tend to minor in things. So if you can't decide right away what you wanna major in or just want a supplemental thing as part of your journey here, you can definitely add a minor in there. We have these, um, you can minor in all of the majors except for film and art education, but additionally we have creative writing, art history, business, and I think that's it. Um, 35% of our students tend to double minor. So um, there's a lot of opportunity for interdisciplinary and creative workshopping um, across all of the different things we offer. So um, our application process is pretty easy. Um, it's just the online application, which we can give you a fee waiver for if you'd like. Um, your transcripts, so any and all college transcripts, if you're um, if you're coming from the transfer end of things. Uh, we don't need your high school transcripts unless you decide to enroll. And then the portfolio process is the same for both transfers and first years. So that's eight to 12 pieces of visual art and design in the last two years in any medium or style. And it doesn't have to relate to your major of interest, but it can if you'd like. Um, so we also have letters of recommendation, personal essays, um, and your resume if you want to submit an extra thing, but it's not required. Those other three things are the only things that are required. Um, so 100% of our students receive some type of merit-based aid. Um, that can be anywhere from $6,000 a year all the way up through our uh, $19,000 Visionary Woman Honors Program. This is um, available to transfer students as well as first years. And it's a really great opportunity um, to further augment your experience here. To qualify, you have to have a 3.7 GPA or above and a really great portfolio. And there's two separate paths that you can take um, relating to what you wanna get out of it. So the academic path is more scholarly and the leadership path is more about building leadership skills and public speaking and community engagement. Aside from that, we have a really career based 94%, um, an average of 94% of our graduates have gotten jobs in their field in the last three years. Um, we have an $1,000 paid internship, which is a built into the curriculum, and we help you obtain that through our LOCKS Career Center. Um, and you, 
if you graduate for more, you have access to the Career Center um, for the rest of your life. So if you want to come back and get resume writing help or, you know, kind of access our network, we, we can provide that for you. So these are all our articulations that we have. That just means two years at this school that's listed in the major of your choice and two years here. You're welcome to contact me about any of these majors if you are eligible or in the area of one of these community colleges. Um, I also do in process evaluations. So if you want a credit evaluation um, before you even apply, just contact me with your transcripts and what you're taking and we can kind of look at that. Um, so there's different levels that you come in at and I can help you with your path before you even apply. We also have continuing education courses if you're interested or if you wanna build up your portfolio before applying. And these are all the ways in which to contact me. Again, I'm gonna drop my contact information into the chat, but thank you so much for listening and I hope to be in touch with you. Bye-bye. Kim, thank you so much to you and Moore College of Art and Design. Next up, you have the opportunity to hear from High Point University. Sarah, take it away whenever you're ready. All right, great. Hi, I am Sarah Lytle. Let's see if I can get my slide up there. Hopefully that's working. There we go. Um, so welcome, I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions here at High Point University. And High Point is located in Central North Carolina. So um, kind of if you're interested in going out of state, doing something a little different, coming a little further south, High Point is a fantastic place to, do, to be. We are, um, as I mentioned, located in the center of the state. We have about 5,000 students, um, a campus of about um, just under 500 um, acres, beautiful campus. What we're, one of the best things we're known for is the, the facilities, and we'll take a look at, at some of those things now. Let's see. So this is our motto. At High Point University, every student receives an extraordinary education in an inspiring environment with caring people. So how do we do that? Um, we base all of this and what makes us a little different is that we have four pillars of academic success. Um, we believe that academic excellence should be promised by every university, but we also want to make sure you're getting hands-on experiential learning in your major. We want you to spend your last um, three or two years at High Point developing life skills. Those are the skills that per, um, per professionals are looking for when they're hiring. And we wanna to continue to model values and build character through your experience at college. Um, academic excellence. So we have over 60 majors to choose from. Some of the top, um, you can come in undeclared. Let's say you're coming in at sophomore level, you can come in undeclared. We'll guide you through what you might wanna do. But business, biology, exercise science, psychology, um, education, you can see the list there. Um, some amazing programs, all taught 100% by faculty, no large lecture halls, you're going to be in classes that are about 15 to 1 ratio. So we really make sure that you're getting that personalized attention and that mentorship in the classroom that is really important to developing your education and your career. As I mentioned, we have got an incredible campus and state-of-the-art facilities. This is a, a picture of our brand new planetarium that just opened um, about two years ago. If you're an exercise science student, we have a human biomechanics and physiology lab that rivals some of the top state schools on the East Coast. We've got news and radio studios. If you're a comm major, we've got a boardroom that can help you figure out, oops, um, you know, get you comfortable in that environment. We want to make sure that you're offered situation, uh, situations in each program that you'll face so you're ready when you're there as, as a professional. Um, as I mentioned, 15 to 1 student faculty ratio, 100% taught by um, uh, faculty. You do get a success coach as a, um, a transfer student here. So you'll get an academic advisor as well as someone who can help you navigate your first year on our campus. That's a person who can help you connect. We think joining and becoming part of the community is really important. This is a very residential community and activities happen all all on this campus. And when you transfer in, you live on campus. Our, our students have to live for the first three years. Um, and most uh, students live all four years on campus. Um, we wanna make sure you're getting that hands-on learning in all the different majors, as you can he see here, some of the things we do. You have access to industry leaders, guaranteed internships programs, undergraduate re research. Um, 
when I say access to innovators, people like Steve Wozniak, uh, Mark Randolph, Sint Marshall, these are incredible people in their field that come and teach and lead our students throughout, the, throughout your time at High Point. And um, we also believe in modeling characters and building values. So service is a big component. We feel that that's really a great thing to be a part of. We've got some amazing things that help you develop life skills, meaning these are the, the things you need to be really successful in the work world. So our five-star um, steak restaurant is part of your meal plan, but it's also a way to get comfortable in that fine dining environment. Um, we've got, as, uh, as you can see here, this is a picture of our boardroom. We've got a seminar that our president teaches and he, where he talks about these life skills. We think public speaking, time management, presentation skills, things like that make you very um, well-rounded as a student when you graduate. This is one of the most beautiful campuses in the nation, number nine, ranked by Princeton Review, and come visit and see why. We offer tours seven days a week um, on the hour, so anytime you can imagine, you can come tour. We have also been lucky enough to be in person this entire year and plan on continuing that, so we've been successful, not hybrid, 100% in class, residential dorm life. We've got incredible um, uh, student life, 16 D1 sports, 200 plus um, organizations, Greek life, intramural sports, religious life, you name it, we have opportunity. We do accept applications in the fall and the spring, um, so you can apply all the way through the summer, the sooner the better. Free application, you can be, be found on our uh, website. And um, transfer scholarships, anywhere from five to $10,000 off per year. If you're a member of PTK, that's an additional $1,000 on top. And so one of the great takeaways and one of the reasons you should transfer to High Point, in-person classes, incredible um, campus, uh, residential campus experience, that hands-on learning, the things that you can get involved in and that amazing career and professional development um, that we promise through your time here. We wanna make sure that not only are you getting a great education, but you're prepared for your next role. And this is me, um, Assistant Director of Admissions. Um, I'll put my information in the chat and um, we hope that you come and visit. A visit is the best way to really experience a campus fully. Sarah, thank you so much to you and High Point University. Our final presentation tonight oh, will be from- um, Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Our final presentation tonight will be from Johnson Wales University. Take it away, Val, whenever you're ready. I am ready. So um, thanks for joining us tonight. My name is Valerie Smith. I'm a regional admissions representative for Johnson and Wales University. Um, and so I cover southeastern Pennsylvania and my colleague Christian, who could not join us tonight, covers the rest of Pennsylvania. However, Johnson & Wales University is not in Pennsylvania. We offer two great campus locations. Our flagship where Johnson & Wales University basically was born is located in Providence, Rhode Island. And then we also offer another option in Charlotte, North Carolina. So we also call the Queen City home as well. The shots that you're currently seeing uh, give you an idea of the city of Providence itself. Um, Providence is very unique because while it is an urban location and we are located in the heart of Down City, um, it also affords us an opportunity to offer the Harborside part of our campus, which is still in Providence, but has a very different feel. You don't feel like you're in the city at all. The building in the top in the center, actually, the back side of that overlooks uh, the, the uh, Narragansett Bay. So beautiful, stunning views, um, but two very different feels depending on which part of our campus you happen to be on. The Queen City, Charlotte definitely, um, without a doubt, is very proud to refer to herself as the Queen City. So lots of Southern hospitality and charm, but again, an urban location. Both campuses, we believe in hands-on learning, regardless of your major. So there would be lab type components um, to really every major that we offer. We offer over 80 majors, so anything from our College of Arts and Science, which would include things like psychology, three equine related majors, uh, political science and criminal justice, which would be the pre-law pathways, biology, which would be a pre-med pathway, just to name a few. We also offer the College of Business. That was the root of our foundation. We were founded by two women as a business school back in 1914, so pretty impressive start pretty inspirational story. Um, 
And so those are your usual suspects. Things like, of course, business, international, mar uh, international business, marketing, and things like that, just to name a few of the highlights there. Our College of Engineering and Design um, offers things like biomedical engineering, robotics, graphic design, just again, to name a few. Our College of Food Innovation and Technology, probably what our, our standout reputation um, kind of highlights. If people have heard of Johnson & Wales, typically they think, oh, that's where you go if you wanna be a chef. Um, so while that's true, um, we do welcome you. If that's something that you're looking to pursue, we actually, I may have mentioned, offer over 80 majors. So um, anything from culinary arts, baking and pastry, culinary nutrition, as well as uh, uh, sustainability and uh, culinary, uh, culinary science and food product development. So lots going on there. We also have a college of hospitality as well as um, health and wellness, which includes a PA program, health science, as well as dietetics and applied nutrition. Some of our labs that you'll see here in Charlotte, again, hands-on learning. The top left, you'll see our fashion merchandising and retailing students at work and so on. We do grow our own food on campus as well. Smaller class sizes, so 18 to one student to teacher ratio. Um, again, this highlights just a handful of the majors that we offer. Um, internships are required, typically sophomore and senior year. Those are, again are required. Study abroad is optional, but highly encouraged. It looked a little bit different this year, um, but again, we're hoping for a return to a more normal experience for our students in, come the fall. Over 150 clubs and organizations for students to get involved in, so there truly is something for everyone, and that would include Greek life as well as athletics, which I'll talk about a little bit more in a minute. In terms of residence life, uh, I will highlight a few things. So yes to cars on campus all four years. We do offer as well uh, pet friendly dorm options as well as gender inclusive dorm options. Speaking of athletics, you'll see on the screen the um, sports that we offer and beside each one, it uh, designates the campus that offers that particular sport. We are D3. And if you're interested in being recruited, this is a good way to jumpstart the conversation with the coaches. This is kind of like your way of filling out your athletic resume. And that in turn will go directly to the coaches. In terms of affording education as transfer students, you're not new to the process. You know it begins with FAFSA. So our school code is shown there on the screen. Um, but we do offer merit-based scholarships. You can participate in NSO organizations or um, be rewarded for your involvement during high school. Certainly you're encouraged to look for outside scholarships and then we offer work study as well. This is my gift to you tonight, some places to explore scholarship opportunities that can be used at the school of your choice. You're always welcome to visit us either virtually or in person. And we are starting to lift some of the COVID restrictions we've had in place for much of the year, although we were open. Um, as a transfer, it is free to apply, no matter which means you, uh, which means you choose in order to do that. We do require high school transcript as well as your college transcript for evaluation of any transfer credit. Uh, and I think that's most of it there. There is, I'm trying to be respectful of our time tonight. Um, if you're interested in staying in touch, you can simply text the word Wildcats to 75192 or contact me directly. Um, and that's shown on the screen right now. So good luck to you. Now, thanks so much to you and Johnson and Wales University. Mm -hmm. I am now going to ask all of our experts to um, turn back on their cameras and share some of their expertise with you as um, audience or students that are planning to go through the transfer process. So we'll go in the same order that you presented, but as experts, what advice would you give someone going through the transfer process? And we'll start with LIM College. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I would say um, ask questions. Um, the transfer process is new for a lot of students um, and each school is gonna have a little bit of a different process. 
So definitely ask a lot of questions, send over transcripts because it's really important to maximize all of your credit that you've already spent a lot of time and money on. Um, and we're all here to help. So don't be afraid to reach out to us either via email, phone, um, or through Zoom, like we're here now. I would recommend also um, checking with us to make sure that the program you have interest in would be available. Um, and what the different start terms are, because depending on what it is that you have already completed may impact that. So that would be fairly important for you to talk with us about. Enjoy it. It's kind of like doing the college search all over again for, for a lot of students. So, so don't be nervous. Um, we're here to help you through this process. We can understand that it, it is a little bit scary, but um, enjoy the ride once again, because you are pretty much not starting from scratch. You already have the college work completed, um, but enjoy it. It's a lot of fun because you get to do all the, the fun stuff again of meeting with people, getting tours and, and all that sort of good stuff. Um, I would just say contact contact your counselor early and often. Um, I, I think, you know, the most challenging part is the credit evaluation. So the sooner that you can get that rolling, even if it's before, um, before you apply, do it because you can start planning with them, you know, as early. Sometimes I work with students even like two years out. So um, also look for articulations. Every school has them pretty much. Um, and I um, also, yes, talk, consider maybe starting, you know, every, a lot of schools have a fall start, but some have spring starts. So maybe that works better for your budget, maybe not your timeline, but your budget or vice versa. So there's a lot of different ways to go about it. Um, just take notes, keep spreadsheets and keep the communication flowing. Um, I would say for us, if you want um, a traditional residential college experience, um, you can still very much have it in um, the two years that you have left. Um, and come visit. Try to visit the campuses you want to go to. You have a lot of knowledge um, under your belt and you know what you're looking for. And it's just a great way to, to experience it and see what you want to do. And then, like all of us have said, we're here for you as a resource. So ask us questions, reach out. There are no um, like silly questions or things that we, we kind of go, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> I think my advice would be that if you are reconsidering a college that you applied to previously, and now for one reason or another, you're circling back to that, that school, um, contact the transfer um, the transfer admissions office first, because the process might be a little simpler than you think. In many cases, you don't need to start from scratch again. Um, many of much of your information they already have on file, so it may be as simple as just reopening your file instead of applying from scratch. Um, and there could be other advantages to doing it that way as well. Perhaps that's that school is still willing to honor a merit scholarship if you're within a certain time frame of when you originally applied. So there could be things that are to your advantage that you don't realize um, that would really make the process a lot more simple for you. And we saw many students do that last year during COVID who wanted to stay closer to home. And now that COVID has settled down, they're feeling a little bit more confident about spreading their wings again. And they're going back and revisiting or rethinking, perhaps transferring to a college that may have been their first or second choice, but was a little farther away. So start by contacting the transfer. Uh, counselors at the individual schools. Um, and other than that, good luck to you. You guys always have such excellent advice. Um, if we go lightning round, I would like you guys to each share um, your favorite event or tradition on campus. And you might not have a chance, because we need to go quickly, you might not have a chance to explain it fully, but we'll go in the same order that you presented again. I would probably say our fashion show, we were able to do it virtually this year using holograms. Um, so the fashion show is definitely a big draw and probably one of my favorite events on campus. My favorite event is graduation. I get to see the people that I've had uh, some impact on their lives. 
Lynn took mine, uh, but I would have to say our annual Thanksgiving dinner, which is a really cool event, takes place right before Thanksgiving break, where faculty and staff serve our students a full home-cooked Thanksgiving meal. Um, I would say the senior thesis show, it's a big party. We get to celebrate everybody's hard work over the last four years and see all of their artwork. For us, we have a tradition. We have Derby Day, which is the first weekend after the students have moved in. So freshmen and transfers, it's just a great way to spend a full day outside car carnival style and um, just get to know people and just a great kickoff to the year. I think for me, it would be uh, something we call Ignite the Night. And it's uh, similar to your Derby Day, I think at High Point, um, where we really officially welcome uh, our incoming freshmen and transfer students to the Wildcat family. All the upperclassmen join in, as well as many staff members. Um, and it, you know, I think after all the time of working with a student and is this going to work out? Are we the right fit? All the questions, the Q and A's that go on, all the Zooms, all the everything. Um, it's time to welcome them home. And that, that's what I love about that. Yes, I think I can speak for all of us in those first, first move in and, and graduation being definitely the most exciting time for those of us who work in the enrollment management teams. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. As you close out, there'll be a quick four question survey. We hope that you'll provide us with some feedback. If you enjoyed this, um, this version or, or learning about colleges in this format, please sign up for more sessions. There's two more hours tonight and then um, three hours tomorrow. This was recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Pennsylvania. Best wishes with your college church, everyone, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.